In the quiet town of Circleville, Ohio, a sinister secret unfolded. The Circleville letters, anonymous, threatening, and shrouded in mystery, uncover the chilling truths behind the cryptic messages that terrorized an entire community. Law enforcement faced challenges, but the identity of the letter writer remained elusive. Join me as I dissect the enigma in on this detailed episode. The Circleville Letters chronicles a mystery that endures captivating hearts and minds. What's up, Collective? I hope you guys are doing well. And as promised, this is actually our first true crime episode of 2024. And the Circleville Letters, I've actually never heard of this case. And the more research I did about it, I got intrigued and thought maybe some of you guys would be too. And here we are. So get comfy and let's get into this. So we're going to start with the backstory. So the Circleville Letters mystery originated in Circleville, Ohio during the late 70s. The story revolves around an anonymous letter writer who targeted residents with disturbing and threatening messages. The letters were often handwritten and delivered by mail. It all began innocently enough with the fe- with the first known letter seemingly containing personal information about the recipients. However, the tone quickly escalated to harassment and threats. The mysterious correspondents claimed to be watching the recipients every move, revealing intimate details about their lives. One of the primary targets was Mary Gillespie, a local school bus driver. The letters accused her of having an extramarital affair and warned her to seize this alleged relationship. The letters were postmarked from Columbus, Ohio, adding an additional layer of mystery to the case. As the campaign of letters continued, it became evident that the letter writer possessed an in-depth knowledge of the victim's personal lives. The letters were often laced with profanity and threatened severe consequences in the recipient if the recipients did not comply with the writer's demands. The Circleville letters not only caused distress within the Gillespie family, but also spread fear throughout the community. Despite efforts by law enforcement to trace the letters, the identity of the mysterious letters were remained elusive until now. So we're going to get into that later, but, and we're also going to be talking more about Mary and her involvement, but the circle of the letters, a series of disturbing correspondence exhibited several patterns and reoccurring themes throughout their con- contents. So the personal information, the letters often began with accurate and personal details about the recipient's lives, including an intimate knowledge of their activities, relationships, and daily routines. Accusations and threats. There are common th- thread in the letters was the accusatory tone leveling allegations against the recipients. These accusations range from extramarital affairs to other personal matters. Threats of severe consequences were frequently used to coerce compliance. The demand for compliance. The writer demanded the recipients follow specific instructions or cease certain behaviors. Failure to comply would result in dire consequences, as explicitly mentioned in the letters. And then there's the cryptic messages. Some of these letters contain cryptic codes or symbols, adding an element of mystery to the correspondence. Deciphering these codes became an additional challenge for those attempting to understand the involvement and motive behind the letters. And then there's the angry tone. The overall tone of the letters was hostile and angry. Profanity-laden language was often implied. intensifying the threatening nature of the messages. And then there's the postmark from Columbus. The letters were consistently postmarked from Columbus, further deepening the the mystery surrounding the identity of the letter writer. And why the focus on Mary Gillespie? 
While other community members received letters too, Mary, the local school bus driver, became a primary target. The content of her letters focused on her personal life, adding a layer of distress to her family. These patterns and reoccurring themes continued to unsettle to the unsettling nature of the letters, creating an atmosphere of fear and paranoia. Yeah, it's really strange. I've never heard of anything like this before. And I know some odd things happened in the 70s, but this is very strange. And it does have a very serious tone to it, so I shouldn't laugh. But let's hear about some of the theories and suspects, potential suspects. So local resident and or acquaintance theory The letter writer could be someone within the community who had personal grievances or issues with the victims. And then there's the motivation, though. What would that be? Well, it could be personal dispute, revenge, or even desire to cause harm to specific individuals. Then there's just the disgruntled lover or spouse theory. Speculation revolves around the possibility of a jilted lover or disgruntled spouse seeking revenge or attempting to disrupt relationships. The motivation, jealousy, revenge, or desire to control the lives of those targeted. Then it could just be a prank or a copycat. The theory behind this is the possibility that the initial letters were meant as a prank and the subsequent ones were imitations by others in the community. But what's the motivation behind this? Well, it could be mischief, a desire for attention, or a misguided attempt at humor. Then there's the law enforcement involvement theory. Some theories suggest the involvement of individuals within law enforcement who may have had personal motives for targeting the victims. The motivation would be hidden personal agendas, abuse of power, or even corruption within local authorities. There's also the random psychopath theory. The letters may be the work of a random psychopath who just enjoyed instilling fear in others without a specific personal connection to the victims. Motivation, enjoyment of causing distress, a desire for power and control, or psychological satisfaction. There's also a political motivation theory. The possibility of the letters being politically motivated with the writer seeking to influence local affairs or gain attention. Motivation, a desire to manipulate public opinion, slow discord, or assert influence over the community. And then lastly, there is the family connection. The suspect, or yeah, the suspect that the letter writer might have, or the suspicion, excuse me, that the letter writer might have had a family connection to the victim using personal information to intimidate Motivation, family disputes, unresolved conflict, or even a desire to exert control over relatives. So, yeah, pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So, let's, I want to get into Mary because this has an interesting story. Um, And it kind of really sets the tone of why she's involved and kind of what's going on with all that. So let me this. Okay, so again, in the 70s, right, there was the anonymous Circleville letters and they were sent to hundreds of residents, right? Even local businesses, government offices, threatening to reveal the recipient's darkest secrets, or even worse. So, Mary was married to Ronald Gillespie. And one of the letters that Mary received was, I've been observing your house. And I know you have children. Stay away from Massey. Somehow, someone knew that Mary was having an affair with Superintendent Gordon Massey. And Gillespie, a local bus driver, wasn't the only one receiving these letters. Across Circleville, residents found anonymous letters in their mailboxes. So did elected officials and local papers. 
But what did Circleville what did the Circleville letter writer want? And how far would he go or or he or she go? I don't know why I said he. <laughs> so the the letter writer wrote a letter to Ron, Mary's husband. So Mr. Gillespie, your wife is seeing Gordon Massey. You should catch them together and kill them both. He doesn't deserve to live. The small town of Circleville, half an hour outside of Columbus, did not seem like a place where neighbors terrorized each other. Yet the anonymous letters targeted multiple residents of the town of only 12,000 people. The attacks on Mary seemed the most personal. Gillespie, you had had two weeks and done nothing. One letter to Ron read, Admit the truth and inform the school board. If not, I will broadcast it on CBS. Posters, signs, and billboards until the truth comes out. Then on August, the I mean, excuse me, then an August evening in 1977, a phone rang in the Gillespie house. Ron picked up, and then moments later, he stormed out into his truck with a twenty two caliber. He told his daughter that he was going to confront the Circleville letter writer. After he left, left, Gillespie's truck slid off the road and rammed into a tree. Gillespie died at the scene. Now, guys, there are pictures to this story, which I will be incorporating on the Collective Culture social medias, um, Instagram and Facebook. I'm also going to be uploading this episode on to YouTube, so you guys will see the pictures on there as well, and I'll leave all the links below. The local coroner ruled Gillespie's death as an accident, but Paul Freshour, Ron's brother-in-law, considered it murder. Before he died, Ron Gillespie conf- confront the. Before he died, did Ron Gillespie confront the person behind the Circleville letters? Police determined that Gillespie's gun had been fired exactly once before his death. They never learned why Ron fired his weapon. And the letters continued. Even after Ron's death, the Circleville letters continued to arrive. And they continued to target Mary. Now a widow and now a widow and Gordon Ma- and with Gordon Massey. Everyone knows what you've done, the letters taunted. If you don't believe us, just make them mad and find out for yourself. The attacks grew even more devious. Years after Ron's death in 1983, Mary Gillespie nearly fell into a fatal trap. One February day, Gillespie stopped her bus on the way to the school. Someone had put an, up a handmade sign on a nearby fence targeting her teenage daughter. Gillespie tried to pull down the sign, but it was tied to a box. And after she brought the box home, Gillespie opened it to find a loaded gun. The gun gave authorities a break in the case. The Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation was able to recover a serial number from the weapon. And the gun belonged to who? Paul Freshour, the man named the man married to Ron Gillespie's sister. Paul Freshour, the man accused of attempted murder. His wife, Karen, confessed to police that her husband had written the Circleville letters. The couple had been in the middle of a contentious divorce and Karen had evidence. She discovered letters hidden throughout their house. Freshour denied the writings of the letters. He claimed the gun had been stolen weeks earlier, yet a polygraph test declared Freshour a liar. Police arrested Freshour, and in 1984, a jury convicted him of attempted murder. During the trial, an expert witness testified that Freshour had written the Circleville letters. Circleville residents hoped, it, or hoped excuse me, that with Freshour behind bars, the letters would stop, but guess what? They didn't. Hundreds of letters swamped Circleville after Fresh Hour's conviction. The prison warden declared, declared that Fresh Hour could not possibly have sent them. The prisoner had no access to paper and pen. Paul Fresh Hour even received an anonymous letter from the Circleville writer while he was behind bars. So a new suspect had arisen. Who hated Paul enough to try to get him into trouble? Fresh Hour's lawyer asked the jury during the trial... If you read the divorce decree, who stands 
to prof- profit financially if Paul is convicted and goes to prison. When the Circleville letters continued, suspicion centered on the ex-wife Karen. She had reported her husband to the police. Did Karen and her boyfriend, who matched a witness description from the booby trap crime scene, set up Paul Freshour? A decade passed and the Circleville letters letter mystery only grew. In December of 1993, when Unsolved Mysteries came to Circleville to investigate, the show also received an anonymous tip. Forget Circleville, Ohio. If you come to Ohio, you'll El Sickos will pay. It was signed, The Circleville Writer. Speaking with Unsolved Mysteries, Paul Freshour begged the show to look deeper. I'd really like to see someone really look at this case on the letters and reopen the letter part of it and get in and find out who wrote these. Then in 1994, the same year Fresh Hour was released from prison on parole, the letters mysteriously stopped arriving in Circleville. Who wrote the Circleville letters? Paul Fresh Hour went to his grave swearing that he did not write the letters. But a recent forensic examination reveals similarities between his handwriting and the anonymous letters. Decades after the final letters, the writer's identity has never been conclusively proved. The local sheriff's office closed the case and the mystery of Circleville letters may never be solved. Man, you know, I was very much hoping that I was going to get answers, (laughs) that there was going to be a suspect and there just isn't guys and sometimes that's the way life is you know but interesting story enough um i think that this is one of those things where you know it's definitely leaving you on a cliffhanger but it's a cliffhanger that will never come back right you're never going to hear any more from it so i don't know i hope it didn't make any of you guys mad <laughs> Um, Let me know what you guys think. Um, If you've received one of these letters, I would love to have you on the podcast and you can tell your story and that would just be amazing. So please reach out to me at media.collectiveculture at gmail or even DM me at the Collective Culture Podcast on Instagram. And if you guys want to join the Collective Culture's newsletter, this monthly newsletter I'm going to be sending out with all the behind the scenes, even episode images and tips, suggestions, links, those will all be in the monthly newsletter. All you need to do is email or DM me your preferred email address. Uh, The newsletter is probably going to start going out the last week first last week of February first week of March so yeah start sending me your email addresses and until next time guys ciao